Welcome to another tutorial. In this one, we're going to be making this um, car catch all. So it hangs on the, your car, like over the headrest. You can take out and put it in one of those, and it'll hang either behind your seat or in front of your seat, and you can put whatever you want in it. It's got some pockets there. Um, so if you want to make this, you'll need the pattern, and since this is a helpful heifer, it's exclusive to the quilt of cow. And there are the materials that you will need. So I have, I got a kit, of course, because they make such amazing kits. Um, it came with everything that you could need. You, it came with a soft and stable. It came with the material. So I cut, that's for my strap out of my soft and stable. I cut my two other pieces from my soft and stable. And I already cut out what they wanted to from the bottom of each one. These are going to get attached to the main exterior pieces. This piece is going to make the pocket. This is my accent fabric. This is also going to be for the strap. And then here is um, my main pieces. So there's four of them. And I already cut out the, the required bottom notches there. And there's another two right there. All right. So now that everything is cut, let's get started. So this part is totally optional optional sorry but I'm gonna do it anyway I am going to use my quilter select free fuse which you can get from the quilted cow and it's just a powder and I've already sprinkled it all over the surface of my soft and stable and I'm going to baste my material to my soft and stable um, so this is instead of like spray sometimes you use spray and all you need is some heat some people may want to use a pressing sheet just to make sure they don't get any of that on their iron if it's exposed, which would be a good idea, but I'm brave. And after I've got some heat, it will semi-permanent bond, which will hold it in place for me. So there's one. I'm going to set that to the side there because I'm going to be quilting it. And then I've got my other one here. And you're not going to be able to see it, but I just, it's coming out. It's just a white powder. You don't need a lot, but I'm just going to put it everywhere. All right. You can put something under it if you want. And then I'm just going to lay my material over just like that. And you can totally use spray. You do not have to use the powder. You don't have to buy the powder, but it's a great fusible option if you've not tried it yet um, and you don't even have to do this fusing I'm just doing it to hold everything in place because I'm going to be quilting uh, quilting this so I'm just going to get that down and then I'm going to choose how I'm going to quilt it now for quilting you can do horizontal lines you can do vertical lines you can do a mixture of the two you can choose the decorative stitch which is what I'm going to do and then I'm going to space out my stitches and just um, um, do some uh, vertical lines. Sorry, it's hard to think sometimes while you're talking. Some vertical lines of my decor decorative stitch. Probably like three lines, three to four lines on each one. But you can quilt it however you would like. And the quilting helps hold this because this is only semi-permanent. It's not forever permanent. The quilting helps hold everything in place, especially if you're washing it, it won't shift on you. So I'm gonna go quilt my pieces and I'll show you what they look like when they're done. All right, so here's what I did. I chose this fancy stitch and I just uh, measured how I wanted them spaced out and drew my line with my friction pen and then quilted it that way on both. So, all right, now we're going to put those aside and now we're going to get our pocket piece and this is going to be the pocket on the outside. And what I'm going to do is, um, it doesn't matter which way because all the sides are the same. So I'm just going to fold right sides together and I'm going to stitch all the way down here along the longest side. You don't have to do the shortest side because when you adhere it to here, the, these raw edges on the short side will get encapsulated or sewed in when you sew these parts together. So you're going to sew along um, the longest side um, and then turn it inside out. Give it a good pressing with the fold at the top and the seam at the bottom. And then we'll top stitch along the fold once we turn it inside out. 
All right, so this is my pocket tube. You can see that's the fold. There's where my seam is. I gave it a good press, so the seam side is the bottom. Uh, and now I'm going to put this into machine, my machine. And you can use a decorative stitch. I'm just gonna use a straight stitch and I'm going to top stitch along the folds all the way down. All right, so there's my top stitching at the top. And then what I did was I just folded this in half. And once I folded it in half, I pinched um, the center up here and here. And then I opened it up. Yep, 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 yep. And I took my uh, my ruler, lined up my mark, uh, lined up on that crease that I made, the creases there, and then I just marked my middle line. And then I took one of my exterior pieces and I measured up from the bottom. You can you can see my line here according to the pattern. All right, and that is where I'm going to the string. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to trim that. I'll get to that. But anyway. I'm going to align the bottom of the pocket along that line, raw edges there, raw edges there. I'll make sure everything matches up after I'm done recording because I can see I'm a little off. All right, so I'm going to clip this in place or pin, maybe put a couple pins in there. And the first thing you're going to, I'm going to do is maybe eh, about an eighth of an inch, scant quarter of an inch. I'm going to top stitch along the bottom here. And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to back tack at the beginning there and sew up that middle line and back tack at the top there to reinforce it. And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do like an eighth of an inch base stitch all the way down each side. So I'm going to go do that now. So that's what my front looks like. There's my base stitch to adhere my pocket to the exterior. There's sewing on the line. So I've got my two pockets and then my little base stitch. Um, on either side on the side so now I'm gonna put this aside and we're gonna work on the strap I believe all right so here is the strap piece and the first thing I did let's unfold that is I folded it just in half wrong sides together and that will give me my center line gave it a good press opened it up and then I took each raw edge and folded it into the center and then I gave that a good press then we're gonna take this uh, soft and stable piece and I'm just gonna open up one side here and I'm going to put that in and then this folds over and then you fold it in half okay so it's tucked under one side if you feel maybe it's a little bit wide go ahead and trim just a little bit off until I mean it should fit on one side pretty well so just use your fingers to manipulate it and then take this and fold it over and once it's folded over then you're going to top stitch um, down both sides okay to secure that wrong piece in and to sew your material all together all right so here you can you can see the top stitching around the handle but what i did is i've taken my exterior piece that i quilted on and that does not have the pocket and i i just measured it because you know it's easy to find half of what i have so i just took my ruler and measured in um, half of the width of my main piece so take from take from here to here divide it in two and then take your ruler and measure in and I made my center mark so that's the center of this block or you can fold it and press it whatever and then according to the pattern I measured out so much from the center mark on either side and then I curved the handle around and placed it so there's my mark there there's my mark on the other side and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna baste um, the top of each handle to this piece. All right, so now that that's done, I'm gonna take my two exterior pieces and I'm gonna put them right sides together. And of course I will clip everything. Um, but after I clip everything, I'm gonna sew the sides down, making sure I back tack at the end in the beginning. And then on the exterior, I'm gonna sew from one side of the bottom all the way to the other side of the bottom, back tacking. And then here, of course, do not sew here yet. Okay, so again, from here to here, here to here and for this one all the way across all right so there that's done side side bottom so I'm gonna put this to the side now and now these are gonna be my lining pieces so all I'm gonna do for these ones is I'm gonna pretty much do the same thing so I'm gonna lay right side to right side and once I have those all lined up okay I'll just talk through it real quick 
you are going to sew the sides, pay attention to the seam allowance on the pattern, and this side here. But here you want to mark out a, a, your opening that because you're going to turn your it inside out through this opening. So your pattern tells you how many inches to leave for your opening. So then you'll just sew from one side to one side of the opening, make sure you back tack, and then skip over that opening and then sew down the rest of it, making sure you back tack at the beginning and the end. All right, so we are at the boxing stage. Um, here is my one piece. You can see it's side, side, and um, the bottom there. You can't see it from that side. But this is the bottom, and you can see I left an opening. Hopefully you can see where I sewed it in the opening. So now with these, we're going to box them. So if you've ever boxed uh, corners before, all you do is you're going to want to match up this seam with this seam. And how you do it is you just take either side of the fabric, and you pull it out and then it kind of like collapses in on itself and then you can see there the seams match up see how they match up when you lay them flat like that and then um, you're gonna nest the seams so one will fold one way the other one will fold the other way so nest those together and then pay attention to your seam allowance and you're just gonna sew a straight line according to your seam allowance making sure you back tack at the beginning and back tack at the end and then you'll repeat that to the other side and you'll also repeat it um, to these two corners on your exterior piece. So again, um, there's that side all sewn up. You can hopefully see it pretty well there. There's the back. Gonna go to the other corner, just grab my fabric, pull it, and those seams should line up. Nest them, one goes one way, the other one goes the other way. Make sure they're aligned inside. And then, it's really small, you don't need to really clip it, but anyway, go and sew according to your seam allowance, down, straight line, and then repeat to your other two corners on the exterior piece. All right, so now you're going to take this, I boxed my corners, you're gonna take the exterior piece and just turn it, turn it inside out. So you're actually looking at the exterior. Okay, and then push out your corners. The beautiful boxed corners, there they are. All right, and then the handle should be laying down still. There's your pockets on the front. And then you're gonna take your lining piece and you are going to put your exterior inside your lining, right sides to right sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck that in. You want your side seams to match up. And I'm gonna get some clips. If you don't have these Jumbo Wonder Clips, mm, they are amazing. Okay, so inside side seam, outside side seam, line up. If you want to, you can even fold one going one way and the other going the other direction. So that's nesting them. Clip that and uh, the handle is inside. So. There is the handle. I think you can see it. It's still laying down. You want that. You don't want it sticking outside all this layering because then it won't be a handle when you turn it inside out. All right. Do that one. Just go all the way around. Now, when you do get to your handle, and you did baste it, but just readjust it if it's not quite laying straight. And uh, make sure it's laying straight because you don't want a crooked handle. All right, there it is. And then um, what I'm gonna do is stitch all the way around. I'm gonna take out the main part so I can have the circular part on my sewing machine and I'm gonna put this in just like that and then I'm gonna sew all the way around uh, using the seam allowance, which it states, um, down from here measured down. All right, and then we're gonna turn it inside out through that opening that we left here on the bottom of our lining, and we're almost done. And uh, here's my handle. I'm just gonna, when I sew over it, I'm just gonna back tack it. 
I'm going to make sure that's really reinforced because it's going to be hanging on your car. So you might put, I don't, hope, I don't know what you put in it, but if you put anything heavy in it, at least it will have some reinforcement there. And then, there we go. I'm going to keep going. The fabric is wanting to shift on me, naughty fabric. Put my clips away. And keep going. And I'm back to where I started and put that. It doesn't really matter because it's on the other side. And I'm just going to sew right over my start a little bit. And then I'm done. And I'm going to clip that. There we go. All right. And then we're going to come back around. And now we're going to turn it. Um, so there's my top stitching all the way around. Now we're going to turn that inside out. And should be able to get it to fit through that opening. Turning it inside out. Okay. So there's that, there's the exterior, and then there's this part here, and I'm just gonna poke out, make sure my corners are poked out there. And then um, <clears throat> for the lining here, um, I don't mind it looking like a machine stitch, so I'm just gonna tuck that, uh, that fabric under, and I'm gonna align everything. You can hand sew this if you don't wanna see um, the stitch line. So there it is. And then I'm just going to sew all the way down about an eighth of an inch to close up that um, close up that opening there. So that will just take me a second here. And if you feel more comfortable pinning it, go ahead and pin it. Um, I'm just going to I uh, I live on the dark side, the brave side. Sometimes it's too brave blade. And I just hold things and stitch things together. And pray I don't make any mistakes. And I know you can't see it, but almost done. It didn't take too long to stitch stitch that um closed. I should have turned the camera. But I didn't. Okay. So there it is. I don't know if you can see it. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to push push that in. And you're going to um, align here. Pull that so um, you have your seam there all the way around. And then you're going to top stitch uh, all the way all the way around the bag. All right, so I'm gonna do that now. And I'm gonna probably use some clips again. So make sure my, whoopsies, seam is pulled down. That extra soft and stable from your seam allowance is gonna tuck under too. And when you're sewing around your handle, make sure your handle is um, up like this when you're sewing it because you don't want it down like that otherwise you'll have problems and your handle won't be useful at all so make sure it's going the right way all right there's that and let's see if I can my sewing table is a little bit of a mess but eh, it works so my thread and then I'm gonna put that in and it doesn't say how much to sew down. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a quarter of an inch. And you can do a fancy stitch, you can do a regular stitch. This is your bag, whatever floats your boat. And here we are. Sewing around. And, oh, oh my needle broke, so I'll be back. I was a little bulky there. All right, so I'm just uh, top stitching, <laughs> finishing. I don't know if you guys have ever had your needle break before. Um, I think it's only like the second or third time that's ever happened to me. But anyway, changed it all out, re-threaded. A little bit slower, maybe over those bumps. Don't know what that was. It's not fun when it does it when you're 
when you're sewing. Got a little, got a little bulk right there. Okay, should have stopped with my needle down. And there we go. And I think we're almost done. And back. And while we were on a break, I went ahead and clipped my starting. So I've already to my um starting line and I'm just going to simply sew over it a little bit for reinforcement and I am now done. So I've got that and I clip there and I got a clip here because I ended up having to restart sewing there but there it is my car catch all there's the inside um, you got a nice roomy lining in there. Uh, fits a little, a little more, but so just make sure that when you're sewing it that it's taut and so you don't get it all bunched up. But anyway, there's your handle. There's the front of it. It's nice and boxed on both parts. There's the back. And then you've got your two pockets. And again, where the headrest is, there's a, a metal bar on each side or whatever your headrest looks like. And you'll just take your headrest off and put that there, whether it's facing the front of your seat or the back of your seat, and you can put whatever you want in there. I have one. Um, mine's a car ditty. It's a little bit bigger, and it has a little slant, a bit of a slant on the front, but I use mine all the time. I put mail in there. I put my sunglasses in there. I put my school keys for work in there. Um, if I have a bill that I need to pay, I'll tuck it in there. So they're very, very handy to have in your car. And it turned out so cute. I love this fabric. I think this is the laughter line. So again, happy sewing.